Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? As you can see behind me, these are the only four books that I have gotten during my entire time in medical school. And I'm actually a final year medical student at this point. So in this video, I'm actually going to be telling you why you actually don't need physical textbooks anymore in medical school. So if you're new to this channel, I'm Mohit Saravana Perumal and as I had said before, I'm a final year medical student here in the Far Eastern Federal University. So let's get started. The first reason is going to be pretty obvious. It is because of the size of the books and the difficulty to carry them around. A lot of medical textbooks are humongous in size. For example, my Harrison's textbook, which I obviously have in the online variant, is actually 3000 pages long and the size of it will actually be this much for a single volume and the book has about two volumes to it. And also just imagine the situation. You might have around three to four subjects every single day and every single book, even if they are about 600 pages, and just imagine the size of that in your backpack. It is just madness at that point of time if you want to carry a physical book. Also textbooks can be really bulky if you need them for an instant reference. For example, referring to a textbook before visiting a patient or before your morning clinical rounds will be unimaginable if you are having a physical textbook. For that reason, something like an iPad or even a phone might be an obvious choice. Which brings us to our second reason. A lot of books to refer but not enough content in each and every one of them. For example, let's take the case of anatomy. Anatomy is actually classified different from one book to the other. For example, in one book, it will be classified based on each and every system like musculoskeletal system, nervous system, etc. But in some books, like major textbooks like Gray's Anatomy, etc., the subjects might be classified based on the location of the parts like upper limb, lower limb, thorax and abdomen, head and neck, etc. So when it comes to anatomy, different universities follow different classifications. For example, my university initially started with organ systems like musculoskeletal and nervous and later they shifted into a different classification altogether. So if you are studying in a university somewhere like mine, you might have to refer more than a single book. And also it doesn't stop there. Just for anatomy, you might need an atlas and a textbook. And in the textbook, you might need four to five different variants of the same textbooks to get through the syllabus that you have to cover. So that's exactly why most of the medical schools nowadays have shifted their syllabus from offline textbooks to online textbooks. And also, most people when it comes to medical textbooks forget about this one. All of us are different from one another and our ability to understand concepts might be different from one another. For example, I might understand better in one textbook while you might prefer the other. So when it comes to textbooks in medical school or any other profession for that matter, one size doesn't fit all. So you might actually get a textbook but you might actually prefer a different one but at that point of time you might have spent a lot of money on this textbook that you can't actually switch to the next one which actually brings us to the third reason this is one of the things that i noted about textbooks from the start of third year and it is not just me i have asked a lot of my friends who are studying in various universities across russia and even in india and they all seem to be agreeing upon this there is actually a drastic decrease in the amount of textbooks that you actually refer to from the third year or so when you start with your clinical subjects so when it comes to subjects like obstetrics and gynecology, pharmacology, ophthalmology, you might actually be recommended to go through medical recommendations rather than medical textbooks for your information. Apart from some of the things in all of these subjects that you have to go through some of the standard information that is present in the textbook, you have to go through the latest clinical guidelines based on the country or the region where you are practicing in. For example, if you are studying in Russia, a lot of drugs and a lot of clinical recommendations vary from something like the British Medical Journal or the American Medical Association. So you might actually be recommended to read the medical recommendations of the current year of the particular region by your professors and at that point of time your medical textbooks will be there in your room collecting dust for the most period of time. For example my own experience when it comes to a subject like internal medicine where the holy grail of the subject is Harrison's internal medicine the book is actually 3000 to 4000 pages long. A lot of things which are given in there are standard but the point is medical recommendations actually changed every single year. So every single year when Harrison gives out an updated resource you have to go and refer to that book any Anyway, so referring to medical recommendations most of the time is going to be free and it will also help you stay updated on the current medical recommendations when it comes to something like internal medicine. So let's talk about medical recommendations for a quick second in here. Medical recommendations have become the primary source of information in the current age of medicine. Keeping up with the drug of choice or treatment strategies is 
is vital when it comes to improving patient outcomes. Studies that come out every single year are referred based on various categories like it can be specific to a particular region, it can be specific to a particular ethnicity, it can be specific to a particular group of people like people who are pregnant, people who are immunosuppressed, people who are elderly and children of course. So medical recommendations are something that medical textbooks can't keep up even with their updates every single year because a medical study comes out every single minute in the world. So this actually brings us down to the last reason why I don't recommend physical textbooks anymore. The reason is actually the cost of the books. For example, let's consider the holy grail of internal medicine, Harrison's textbook of internal medicine. This book is actually 3000 to 4000 pages long as I had said before and it actually costs about 8000 rubles or 8000 Indian rupees for that matter. So at that size and price, it will actually not just break your bank but it will also break your back when you carry it and you might actually need to order an orthopedics medical textbook to actually aid with the ailment of your back. And actually, for me, the main disadvantage when it comes to physical textbooks is I actually can't input a physical textbook into a text-to-speech converter and listen to the them actively when I'm actually going through the textbook which has actually proven to improve my reading speeds and improve my speeds of getting through concepts and understanding them better and memorizing them better for the long run. So yeah that's it we have come to the end of my long list of recommendations why I actually don't recommend you buying physical textbooks anymore. If you have any suggestions on either side why you would actually recommend physical textbooks over all these disadvantages please comment them down below and even if you are agreeing with some of these recommendations let me know in the comment section leave likes down below if you found this video to be helpful i'll see you guys in the next video really soon take care bye bye